Um, I think, uh, you know, MBL is, I think MBL is sort of an important place right now. It's got this new connection with the University of Chicago, and I think we're still all trying to figure out how to really make the most of that and make MBL a stronger, a stronger place. I'm Ann Giblin. I'm the um, acting director of the Ecosystems uh, Center, and I'm a senior scientist there. Uh, sort of the classic. I was interested in science as a kid. I really liked the dinosaurs. And then uh, when I was uh, about nine years old, I went to the beach with my grandmother, and she had bought me a mask and snorkel, and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think my parents were both very curious people. My mother was a trained as a mathematician, um, so they were always the kind of parents that bought educational toys and things like that. And then I had a, a great biology teacher in high school, who I'd say is a big influence as well. When I was looking at graduate schools, uh, someone had told me about Boston University Marine Program, and that was the first time I had heard of the MBL. And when I came to Woods Hole, I was just really excited by all the things that were going on. I have to be honest, I also applied to the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution and, and didn't get into their graduate program. Uh, but I just was amazed. There were seminars going on all the time. There was a lot of different institutions, and it just seemed like a very exciting place to be. So that's why I chose it. I think one of the things that I really didn't expect to like so much that I really liked is I ended up in a fairly big lab with my advisor, Ivan Valiella, and we did a lot of things together as a group collaboratively. And I think up until then I thought science was more of a sort of individual endeavor. You know, you went to the lab and you did your thing. And we were going out sort of in big groups doing field work and working together. And, and I really enjoyed that sort of collaborative aspect of the science. It, it was a bustling place. I mean, actually, when I first came to visit, it was January, but there were some courses going on at the MBL for January term. Um, there was a, one of the oceanographic ships had just come in. Um, there was all sorts of activity in town, even though it was kind of like the dead of winter. So uh, that's my first impression. Well, my first experiences were taking the courses, which were sort of month-long block courses, and the very first one was invertebrate zoology by uh, Arthur Humes, who was the bump director at the time. And that was a very field-intensive course. We went out on the MBL ship, which was the Verrill at the time. Um, it was nicknamed the Vomiting Verrill <laughs> for a reason. Um, and just going out on these long boat trips and then uh, dredging up all sorts of organisms and then bringing them back to the lab and identifying them. And one of my most vivid memories was going out to a place called Crab Ledge, uh, which is off Monomoy, where you sort of get some of the cold water fauna in mixing with some of the warm water fauna and just dredging up all these amazing starfish and things like that. So, I mean, I th sort of had a romantic Jacques Cousteau view of uh, marine science, but I also was very interested in sort of environmental problems. I had sort of done a lot of that in college, worked on various types of ecosystems that were impacted by different kinds of fertilizer runoff or pollutants. So I was sort of trying to meld both marine science with something to do with the environment. Well, the Alaska happened when I joined the Ecosystem Center. I mean, I'm primarily an aquatic scientist. I worked in freshwater and marine systems. I haven't worked that much in terrestrial systems, but Gus Shaver was a scientist uh, there, and he'd been working a lot in Alaska on the tundra. And he was working in wet sedge tundra, which is almost like a marsh. So he convinced me going up there was almost like going to a salt marsh without the salt. And then once he got me up there, he started dragging me into drier and drier ground. Um, one day, I didn't even need my boots. I said, Gus, what's going on here? <laughs> but I found it was interesting to make the comparison between the way the I study primarily elemental cycles and how those elements cycle in a terrestrial system versus an aquatic system can give you some um, interesting insights. Um, so I ended up going to Alaska partially because of, of Gus and, and my other colleagues at the center. It was just a great opportunity. Um, some of these other sites I've gone to, again, because they're just interesting research opportunities. The Gulf of Mexico presented itself after the oil spill. I had a, 
a friend working down there that invited me to come down and work with him and one of my other former colleagues, and it seemed like a great opportunity. So. Um, I started out interested more in pollutants. I started out actually working on heavy metals. And then when I was looking at what was influencing the heavy metals, it turned out a lot of the other basic cycles going on in the sediments had a big impact, carbon cycling, sulfur cycling. Um, so that's sort of how it, it started. And then I just got much more interested in those cycles. There's, you know, there's sort of a limited number of things that I could have done as a graduate student and beyond with heavy metals partially because of equipment, partially because of the questions I was interested in, whereas some of these more basic understanding of how the, how the world actually functions uh, became more interesting to me. Well, I never left, right? Yeah. <laughs> I've been here for 40 years, <laughs> so it's, it's just always been a great uh, place to work and a great place to be. I've really enjoyed it. It's been intellectually always stimulating. Uh, I've always had great colleagues. And uh, as, as you probably know now, Woods Hole is a great place to live, so. At, at the center, oh boy, there's a, I mean, I would say all of my colleagues. I mean, I started out when I was uh, first starting, uh, Gus Shaver, uh, Bruce Peterson, Jerry Melillo, John Hobby were all excellent mentors. Um, and then I, you know, sort of grew more, uh, to be collaborators with them. Um, it's been great. Ivan Valiella is still here. I still collaborate with him sometimes. Um, but then I've had new collaborators come through since. Uh, obviously, Ed Rastetter, Zoe. Uh, I'm worried I'm going to leave somebody out and insult them. But uh, I've had a lot of great collaborators here. Um, when I first came, it was really almost entirely a summer institution with just a very small year-round program. The year-round program has really grown, um, obviously, although it's maybe getting a little smaller again. Um, I, I'd say that was sort of the biggest change from going to more year-round type of operation. Um, obviously, with the University of Chicago, we've changed again. We're we're not a small independent laboratory. We're part of a, of a big university. And I think uh, we'll see how all those changes actually play out in the end. But, um, you know, a little more concerned about sort of uh, doing things the way a big university would do them rather than sort of shooting from the hip sometimes, which is probably good, but it can be fun to just do whatever you want. <laughs> Uh, they twisted my arm. <laughs> no. Um, well, um, I felt that I really care very, very much about the Ecosystem Center, and I wanted to make sure that um, we continue. So I'm just hoping to um, move us along in the right direction until we get in a, a, a permanent director. Um, my, my goals are to actually set us up for sort of the way we are going to fit into the lab through the strategic plan, make sure that the group uh, stays together and stays strong and that we sort of build upon our strengths to a, a future that fits in well with the strategic plan and, and with what we want to do. Oh, I mean, I think MBL has been my career. I mean, I think I've got an education and uh, experiences here I couldn't have gotten almost anywhere else. I've had the opportunity to interact with great scientists on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, almost everybody in the world I've ever wanted to meet or talk to comes through here uh, at some point, and I've had a chance to meet them and talk to them. So it's, it's been a great place. Um, I think the sort of focus on doing sort of really good science without too many distractions is what everybody really um, loves about the MBL. And the fact that there's so many different people coming through. So if you have a question um, or you're thinking about something, there's always someone to talk to. So I, I think that's the real strength of the MBL. Uh, well, probably same as everybody else, you know, going out and uh, 
having a picnic on Devil's Foot or uh, watching the sunset on Woodneck Beach, uh, sort of the things uh, going out on our boat, the Sean are always sort of uh, things we really like to do. I'm trying to think, I'm not good with favorite memories kind of questions. Uh, 